This is a page from one of the most useful books available for tracking down electrical problems in Chrysler Corporation automobiles. And this is the book, the 1974 Service Manual. No question about it, there's a lot of information. In fact, there are almost 300 pages worth in the Service Manual. Let's break it down into terms we can all understand. A wiring diagram is like a map. To use a map effectively, however, you must know several things. First, it has to be a map for the area you're working with. A map of Wyoming wouldn't do you a bit of good if you were interested in getting from Detroit, Michigan to Munising, Michigan. Next, you have to know what the symbols mean. Do you want to travel expressways all the way? Or do you want to make side trips down secondary roads? The map legend shows the symbols for the types of roads. National interstate highways, U.S. highways, state and provincial highways, and so forth, and a scale of miles. Also, you have to know where you are and where it is in relation to where you're going. Here's a situation that's all too common. The little woman took a turn at the wheel and zigged where she should have zagged somewhere along the line. Now she's lost. A map usually has another feature, an index. The index lists the names of the towns in alphabetical order. Next to the town is a letter and a number. Find the name of the town and the appropriate letter and number, and locating the town is easy. The letters are across the top of the map, and the numbers are along the vertical edge. This is a typical page from the Chrysler Plymouth Service Manual. Let's assume you've never seen one of these before and go over it step by step. PD Master Wiring Diagram is printed at the bottom of the page. This indicates this diagram is for Plymouth Fury and Dodge Monaco. The wiring diagrams are divided into separate sections for each car line. The Chrysler Plymouth Service Manual has five sections, and the Dodge Service Manual has four sections. Each car line has a letter designation. Okay, we know this diagram is for one of the full-size cars. The components shown are identified, such as the electric choke control. When you look closer, you see the internal circuitry of the electric choke control is also shown. But what does it mean? The circuitry legend at the beginning of the diagram section has the answers. The electric choke control has a resistor, a normally open contact, a normally closed contact, a thermal element, and a ground connection. It would be worth your while to memorize the symbols shown in the legend. There is one symbol which deserves special attention, the one used in the PD and CY diagrams to denote the grommet used on the main wiring harness to pass the wires from the engine compartment to inside the body compartment. Here's what the grommet looks like in the car. 1974 Plymouth Fury, Dodge Monaco, Chrysler, and Imperial models have a large grommet to carry the wires through the firewall to the terminal block inside the car instead of a bulkhead disconnect block mounted on the firewall. This is what the symbol for this grommet looks like in the wiring diagram. But notice the symbol only shows one wire passing through the grommet, when in reality there are 30-some wires going through it. Notice this grommet symbol is shown several times on the page. This means that each of the wires go through the main grommet in the firewall, not separate grommets. Other grommets, like this one for the trailer towing option, are shown like this. There is one symbol not shown in the legend, which you should know, the symbol for a splice. A splice is represented by a black dot where three or more wires come together. Let's get back to the electric choke control circuit. See the two ovals, one above and the other below the choke control? The letter C indicates it is a connector. The letter E means the connector is in the engine compartment. The number 32 means it is listed as CE32 in the connector chart. The locations are listed in the contents under connector charts. There are three groups of connectors, 
CB, CE, and CI. CB means the connector is located in the body of the car. CE indicates the connector is in the engine compartment, and CI, the instrument panel. The CE32 connectors are identified as the connectors for the electric choke control. Also, the location of the connectors is called out. In this case, they're located at the right rear of the engine. The chart shows the two halves of the connector. One of the wires is marked J2 12 dBL, and the other, which goes to the choke heater, is marked 18 dBL. These letters and numbers are important to you because they form an identification code. Also, main circuit identification codes have been developed to aid you in tracing circuits. You'll find it in the reference book. In this case, the J means the wire is in the ignition system run circuit. The 2 indicates it is part of the main circuit. The 12 is the gauge of wire used. The DBL indicates the color of the wire, in this case, dark blue. Let's say you want to check the horn circuit. You look up horn in the main circuit identification chart. Horn circuit wires have a letter H as the first part of the wire identification. Now, let's get into how to find the horn circuits in the wiring diagram. The place to look is the alphabetical index and find the zone location. This is where the wiring diagram is like a road map. You follow the number across the top and find the letter along the side. There it is, B130, horn. The oval indicates there is a connector. CE31. To find the location, look at the connector charts at the end of the PD wiring diagram section. The chart tells us the connector is located near the left front yoke. It has a dark green wire with a red tracer, and on Plymouth and Dodge models, there's an additional connector available for the optional horn. Okay, let's trace the circuit back from the horn to the switch. This is the symbol for the main grommet, so we know the wire goes through the firewall into the interior of the car. We continue following the wire and find we've come to the edge of the page. The code number of the wire is shown, H2, 16 dark green with a red tracer. You turn the page and look for a wire with the same number. You follow the wire across the page. Incidentally, we're using this circuit as an example because you have to backtrack several pages to get to the horn relay and switch. The wire leads to the horn relay. Oh, there's a connector, CI85. CI, you remember, means it's in the instrument panel. The circuit goes through the horn relay to the fuse block cavity number four. The circuit runs from the horn relay to the horn switch. The switch is normally open. When it's closed, it completes a circuit to ground. Now, let's track down a hypothetical problem using what we've covered so far. The problem is the time delay ignition switch lamp does not light. Step number one. Look in the alphabetical index for ignition switch lamp. It is located in zone C41. Next, trace the circuit back to its source. Okay, notice the code for the wire is J1520, brown with a yellow tracer. We've come to a fork in the road, so to speak. CI67, a diode connector is on one side and a wire branches off in the other direction. Let's go through the connector. The arrowhead diode symbol indicates that the current flows in this direction. This also tells us the source must come from the other wire because a diode will only allow current to flow in one direction. While we're this far, let's see what other items are fed by this circuit. A little farther along the line, we come to a switch title lamp. From the switch title lamp, the circuit goes to ground. Let's get back to the other wire. J1520, brown with a yellow tracer. It runs to the edge of the page, so it must continue on the other side. So it does, and it leads to the ignition and switch title lamp time delay relay. On the other side of the relay, the wire is a different color. It's labeled 
D3118, black, and it leads to the fuse block cavity number three. Let's move to a car and see if we can solve this problem. Okay, the problem is, the ignition time delay lamp does not light. Normally, the lamp will light when the front door is opened and remain lit for approximately 30 to 90 seconds after the door is closed again. Let's check to see if other items on the ignition time delay lamp circuit are working. For instance, the switch title lamp. If the switch title lamp does not work, we can assume the problem lies closer to the source of voltage. The switch title lamp is working. So we know there is voltage up to the diode connector. The switch title lamp is working, and both circuits are fed by the same feed wire. Now that the general problem area has been isolated, let's pinpoint the problem. First, check the bulb. The bulb is OK. Next, check the socket to determine if voltage is available. No voltage is available. Back to the wiring diagram. We use the diagram to trace back from the lamp to the first connector. In this case, it's CI-17. Turning to the diagram connector pages, we note that CI-17 is a single circuit connector, and it's located to the left of the steering column. Here's the problem. The terminal has backed out of the plastic connector. This was a simple problem to solve. There will be another problem in the reference book which goes into greater detail. You'll have a chance to practice what has been covered so far in this film. Remember, this is one of the most useful sources of information for tracking down electrical problems in Chrysler Corporation automobiles. Learn to use it well, and every job will be a little easier. Thank you.